Today, I'll be looking at the role of simulation in conquering coronavirus. The role of simulation in conquering coronavirus. So what's the reason I'm coming up with this paper? Today is the 26th of March 2020. In February 2020, which is last month, I ran a ML model and from it, the COVID-19 has to be airborne for it to infect as many as it is, as it has, and as it is currently infecting. Now, this conclusion suggests. Now, today, 26th of March 2020, I ran a model and then, of course, added airborne to one of the features. The already existing features released by World Health Organization, which includes, uh, of course, uh, droplets, which is part of the main features, droplets from, from human saliva when one coughs or sneezes has been one of the major means of tra of transmission. So I added hairbone to the model and the results still suggest that there are more means of transmissions not yet accounted for. That's the first reason I'm coming up with this paper. The second reason is to deal with issues of drug resistant organisms called drug resistant diseases. For example, if a new variant of malaria is now resist is now resistant to existing malaria drugs, of course you'll say it is is a new variant or new shade of malaria. Now the third point is I hope through this paper to be able to encourage a shift in approach to drug and vaccine creation. From just coming up with cures to understanding the behavior of living organisms. Please take note. You can interchange the word organisms or living organisms as used in this paper with the word virus. So the first question is what causes drug resistance? First, we have to know that diseases in this regard are caused by living organisms. Yes, living. But are also called foreign organisms because when they come into the human body, they are not supposed to live in the human body, hence they being called foreign organisms. And what most foreign organisms wants to do is to make its host, in this case human body, its home by conquering the host. Whenever there is a change in the behavioral pattern of these organisms, which were not factored in when the drugs were made, that's when you hear of cases of organisms now being resistant to a particular drug. So what simulation? There are several definitions of simulation online, but I just picked this one. I like it. A simulation is a recreation of a real world process in a controlled environment. It involves creating laws and models to represent the world and then running those models to see what happens. Simulations are used for scientific exploration, for safety tests, and to create graphics for video games, movies, and ATC. Simulations can be used in various scenarios 
engineering scenario, be it uh, electrical, chemical, the field of science itself, various scenarios you can use simulation. So can living organisms be simulated? My answer is yes. So the next question is how can living organisms be simulated? How can living organisms be simulated? Now the first point I want to talk of is by looking at the family the organism comes from, just like human beings, siblings can have common features and behavior. The second is by looking at the generation the organisms falls under. Here I mean the current type of an organism because there can be various shades or variants of an organism. Using COVID for example, COVID 2019, that's the generation. The third point is by looking at the origin of the organism. By origin I mean when was the first occurrence of an organism and then whatever studies was carried out during that time you can take that into cognizance the fourth point is by looking at the role nature plays in making organisms more or less powerful now organisms are living objects yeah they they, they are alive and sometimes nature which could mean nature as it is now or nature as we have nature as it has always been or nature as it is now nature as it is now is nature as man as nature that man mankind has altered in any way these two scenarios nature as it's always been or nature as it is now can increase the potency of living organisms or it can make it less powerful so you need to look at how nature has affected an organism a living organism a foreign organism and then even it be curb the effect of nature on it then the fifth point is by looking at the previous versions of the organisms that you trace the trend of the various versions of the organisms and then uh, based on the trends of behavior you can simulate now so as i said in the one of the earlier slides i said that this in the model i ran suggests that even if we include airborne and then of course the droplets that there are other means of transmission now this other means of transmission i don't know but i'll give clues now if you look at uh, the extreme cases of other respiratory diseases you might be able to find out means of uh, other means of of uh, coronavirus is spreading that the world has not taken cognizance of second point is if you look at the extreme cases of other siblings of coronavirus now i'm using extreme cases because uh, it's i don't know whether there's been a time in the last 50 70 years or more that uh, the world has had to face such pandemic especially with the improvement in science over the years so that's why i'm using extreme cases you look at extreme cases of other siblings of the coronavirus uh, how it was trans how it's been transmitted and then you might have an idea of coronavirus is being transmitted then you look at extreme cases of previous versions of coronavirus that can also serve as guide then you can also look at the, extreme cases of the current version of the coronavirus covid 19 and then also you know from there uh, be able to tell other means of transmission now i said by extreme cases i mean as extreme cases of the behaviors of the organisms protecting itself now organisms living organisms 
just like human beings, just like animals, have means they their behavior when they are trying to attack other people, they have their behaviors when they are trying to defend themselves. So these two scenarios must be taken into cognizance when you are looking at the means of transmission and even how to to really understand the way it replicates itself. Another point is you look at the if the virus in this case corona or any other virus if it comes from animals then you also have to look at the behavior of such an animal to be able to tell because uh, the virus coming from an animal into a human being will behave the way the animal might behave inside a human being. of course an animal is not supposed to be inside a human being so you look at these scenarios it will point you to other means of transmission now it's always better to assume the worst than to neglect it so back to simulation now what are examples of simulation languages and models now i just listed uh, 11 here but if you look at the link beneath you can see over like 40 like uh, i think about 48 simulation languages and uh, apis that you can use for simulations but some that are listed here are python r c plus plus matlab mathematica algo fortran j julia wolfram c so please look at um, the link below and uh, understand that when we are talking of simulation it can vary from the the lang the language you are to use might depend on what you are trying to simulate whether it is lab or electrical engineering or or other forms of engineering or computer games so that would det will determine what type of simulation language or model you use so what's the way forward now when you are coming up that's this an advice to scientists now when coming up with cures for diseases emphasis should shift from creating cures that deal with the disease that is we should not just be interested in hey let's find a cure to malaria let's find a cure to this no that's good but before you think of finding the cure you should first think of mastering the behavior of the living organisms now the cure can then stem from the knowledge of the living organisms attitude once you've been able to master the current behavior of living organisms then you should be able to get the cure that should be the key then the second is more of a warning to scientists that just like human behavior can change so also living organisms behavior can also change and it does change so the, this battle is a continuous one you no know, one has to keep on uh, being proactive don't wait for things to happen prepare for things to happen then the final point is a warning to countries that they have to invest more in continuous research science must be heavily funded and we must keep them on their toes so that uh, this kind of scenario the world has found itself in would happen again at least in a long long time so these are the some of the references i used uh, there's an article airborne transmission of respiratory diseases it was published around 1995 you can look at it the number two is top eight respiratory illnesses and diseases and the third one is respiratory illnesses 13 types of lung infections you, you can also look at it and i end by saying we have overcome thank you for listening to this and uh, i'll see you next time bye bye